In this video, the learner will determine the area of a figure. So we have some steps that we're going to use to be able to solve these area problems. First, we're going to draw a picture if there's not one there already. We'll label our given information, determine which formula to use, and then solve. Here's some formulas that we're going to be using for this set of examples. Uh, we've gone over circumference of circles before. And we're going to have area of triangles. The formula is 1 half b times h. The b in this formula is the base. The h is the height. For a rectangle or parallelogram, it is just b times h. Again, b is the base, h is the height. For a rhombus, we're going to have area is equal to 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. That D does stand for diagonal. For trapezoids, we'll have 1 half B1 plus B2 times the height. So B in this one are the two bases, so B1 and B2. It doesn't matter which one is which as long as you have your two bases there. And H is the height. We'll go over regular polygons at a later time, uh, just for the sake of knowing what the uh, variables are. A is the apothem, and P is the perimeter. And the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius. For any of these formulas where we have a base times a height, it's important to recognize that the base and the height of a figure are always going to be perpendicular they will always make a right angle. In our first example, we're going to be finding the area of a square with a perimeter of 48 units. Perimeter is the sum of all the sides of the figure. We know a square will have all of the sides that are the same length. Since all of the sides will be congruent, we can take this 48 and divide it by 4, so each side is going to be 12. A square is also a rectangle, so in order to find the area, we're going to be using the formula for a rectangle, which is base times height. So area equals base times height. In this case, the base is 12, and then the height is also 12. So 12 times 12 gives us 144 square units, and that will be the area of that square. I want you to try this example. Notice we're given a rectangle with a diagonal of 17 and a height of 8. Here in example 3, we're given a parallelogram. We know that the formula for the area of a parallelogram is base times height. Notice we're given the side length here that's 12 and the side length here that's 15. That 15 is considered the base because it could also be the side down here. Remember, opposite sides are congruent. Now, remember the base and the height have to make a right angle. So this 12 is not the height of that parallelogram. This dotted line here will be the height. We can make a connection with the parallelogram and rectangle by actually moving that triangle over here and completing that rectangle, showing that this will be the base and this dotted line will be the height. So we're going to use this 30, 60, 90 triangle to be able to find that missing height. So we're given that 12, which is across from the 90, so that's going to be our 2x. We'll find x by dividing by 2, and so x root 3 will be 6 root 3. So across from our 30 in our triangle will be 6. Across from our 60 will be our 6 root 3. So across from our 30 is our height, so the height of this will be 6. So we have our area formula of base times height. So our base is 15 and our height is 6, so our area is 90 square units. In example 4, we're going to be finding the area of this right triangle. We're given a leg of 5 and a hypotenuse of 13. We know the area formula for a triangle is base times height divided by 2. 
Since the base and height have to be perpendicular, we know that they have to make a right angle, so we know the two legs could be the base and height of the triangle. But we're missing one of the legs, so we have to solve for that. And we can use Pythagorean theorem to do that. So we have 5 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared. So 25 plus x squared equals 169. Subtract 25 from both sides and get x squared equals 144. So that other leg is 12. Now we have the base and height to be able to find the area. So area is going to be our base of 5 times our height of 12 divided by 2. 5 times 12 is 60, then divide by 2 to get an area of 30 square units. In example 5, we're going to find the area of this triangle. We know that the area of a triangle is given by the formula base times height divided by 2. Notice that this triangle is equilateral, therefore all of the side lengths will be 8. So we know our base down here will be also be 8, but we need the height. We remember also that the angles of an equilateral triangle are all 60 degrees. That makes this right triangle here a 30, 60, 90. So we're given that we have a hypotenuse of 8. That gives us an x value across from the 30 of 4, and a height, or across from the 60, of 4 root 3. So now I have a base of 8 and a height of 4 root 3 that I can plug in for area. So I have 8 times 4 root 3 divided by 2. That gives me 32 root 3 divided by 2. Therefore, my exact area is 16 root 3 square units. In the next example, I want you to do this by yourselves. We are given a 45 degree angle here and the side of 12. In example 7, we're going to find the area of this rhombus. We need to remember some properties of rhombi first. A rhombus is also a parallelogram, and so we know that the diagonals will bisect each other. So we know that this diagonal cuts this diagonal in half, so if this piece is 3, we know this piece will be 3. We also know that all the sides will be congruent, so each side will be 5. Also, the diagonals will be perpendicular, which makes four right triangles inside here. So we need to find the area of this rhombus. We're going to use the formula 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Right now, we only have one diagonal of 6. It's not necessarily congruent that the diagonals are equal to each other, so we actually have to solve for that other value. We can use the right triangle to help us do that. We know that one of the legs is 3, and that hypotenuse will be 5. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus x squared equals 5 squared. 9 plus x squared equals 25. Subtract 9 from both sides, and square root to get 4. So we know that missing piece of that diagonal here is 4. Therefore, the other piece is 4. So now we know that the diagonals are 6 and 8. So we have enough information to go back to our area formula. Area is going to be 1 half times 8 times 6. So half of 48, which gives us 24 square units. It's important to note when given a rhombus, we have to use the diagonals to find the area. We won't use the side lengths. In example 8, we are given an isosceles trapezoid that has legs that measure 10 centimeters and bases of 12 centimeters and 2 centimeters. The base angles measure 60 degrees. Find the height and the area of the trapezoid. So we know so far we have bases of 2 and 12, base angles of 60 degrees, and we know that these two legs here will be 10. We want to be able to find the height 
which is this red dotted line here. So we're going to be using a 30, 60, 90. We're given the 2x, divide by 2 to get across from the 30, and across from the 60 will be x root 3. So we now know the height is 5 root 3. The area of a trapezoid is given by 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. So now let's plug in our given values. We have 1 half times 2 plus 12 times 5 root 3. 2 plus 12 is 14. So we have 1 half of 14 times 5 root 3, which gives us 35 root 3 square centimeters. Then we have this last example that I want you guys to try. 